Hello, we are um, guests at Schur Europe in Germany. My name is Jens and I want to tell you a little bit about uh, analog versus digital wireless microphones and I want to also tell you a little bit about our ULXD digital wireless microphone system. First of all, let me show you um, the differences between analog and digital transmissions and there are some advantages and there's also a disadvantage to it and I want to give you a little bit detail on that. What you can see here is a spectrum analyzer. Uh, it's used to make RF visible and what you can see here is the carrier of my uh, wireless analog wireless microphone here and I, as I zoom in a little bit and as I talk into the microphone you will see how an analog frequency modulated analog FM signal looks like. Um, the carrier signal is modulated in the rhythm of my audio signal of my speech and uh, yeah you can see how exactly that look like, looks like. Um, a little bit different is uh, a digital signal. I don't, I just change to the digital signal and leave everything else the same. So you see, this is how the digital wireless microphone looks like. It doesn't matter if I'm talking or if I'm quiet, the signal always looks exactly like that. The reason for that is that we um, convert the analog signal into digital and we have a bit stream that we transmit uh, and we, uh, through some algorithms, we, we generate a constantly changing bit stream. So, um, that's why the system, uh, the signal always looks more or less exactly like that. And um, this is a uh, an big advantage if you think about not only one wireless microphone, if you think about many wireless microphones. And I give you an example and I start with, uh, with analog again and show you what happens if you have more than one analog signal, if you have two, for example. And then we will see, um, sorry, uh, what happens here. So I have, uh, I zoom a little bit out here. I have one carrier here, so far so good. And then I turn on another one and you see all of the sudden more frequencies show up. These are, uh, and um, there are, is a lot of information out there. What you see here are so-called intermodulations. Um, where they come from uh, and how they can be dealt with uh, is knowledge that's out there. So I just want to focus a little bit on what, is, what, what does it mean in, in our context. So um, they, if, you, if you look at the spec spectrum analyzer, for the analog, in the analog domain, you don't see a big difference in these signals. Mathematically, what happens, this signal here is two times this carrier minus this carrier. So it's uh, 730 times two minus 731 is 729 megahertz. And if we now take a look at actual receivers on this uh, left side here, you see I have one on 730 megahertz, 731. This one is uh, uh, 729 and this is 732. Um, and as you can see here, we really have signal here. And if I turn off one of the transmitters, you see that it all goes away and it doesn't matter which one I turn off. If I take the other one, same thing. And what you also can see is that the blue LEDs are on. That means that there will be audio. If I would have a microphone connected to it, there would be really audio on the output of this receiver. And um, because of the nature of the intermodulations, two times this frequency minus this frequencies, the two time frequency one means that also the frequency modulation but with, uh, and, and the, the, the measurement there is called deviation. The deviation doubles and that means that the output of this signal will be much louder than the, out, uh, the, the output of this receiver will be much louder than the output out of 
that receiver because the deviation doubles and the deviation is a measure for the loudness of the signal. The louder I am, the, the more deviation um, I have. So in other words, uh, it's in the nature of an analog system that an analog receiver cannot um, detect an intermodulation from a carrier signal. It sees the signal here, it sees it's, it's valid, it has the valid tone key also, so it's, it's think, it thinks it's the right signal. That's different in the digital domain. If I do the same thing with two digital transmitters, Here, and if I bring them close together, you see the same, the same effects. You see also um, intermodulations. But what you can clearly see here is that the intermodulation right there is wider, has more deviation than the original signal. Same effect than with analog system. But here, since we have always the full deviation, it's very nice to see that the intermodulations have more deviation than the original signals. And now comes a big advantage of the digital system. If we now look at a digital receiver, the one, the one right here, you will see that it's tuned in the same way than these here. This is frequency one, this is uh, 610, 611, that's 609 and that's 612 megahertz. And you see these two receivers here, they receive the intermodulation, but they don't pass audio. And that's a, a big advantage of digital systems and that allows to have much more uh, carrier signals much closer together. And in the end, it means more channels in the same frequency band uh, than with analog systems. And uh, this is um, very important because we will see in the future less spectrum and we will have more and more channels. And so an advantage like that uh, will be and already is very important. It's a, a very big advantage of digital systems over analog systems. So um, let's focus a little bit, a little bit on, on ULXD here. So as we have seen, um, in the nature of the digital transmission, um, we can detect intermodulations and uh, we have the possibility, uh, since we can detect them, we have the possibility to, to place much more frequencies much closer together. ULXD has a, a bandwidth of 60 to 72 megahertz and this gives us um, round about a maximum of 200 uh, frequencies, 200 compatible frequencies in one frequency version. We also have a, a mode called um, high density mode, HD mode, and this HD mode um, reduces the transmit power of the transmitters a little, a little bit, that reduces the range, but, uh, and it also increases latency. I will talk about latency um, a little bit more later. Um, so with increased latency and with lowered power, we can get up to 560 simultaneous channels with one frequency version or in another me measure up to 64 channels in 8 megahertz. So a very very high number um, of channels. Yeah I talked about latency that's the only disadvantage of uh, the digital transmission. We have latency. The latency of ULXD is 2.9 milliseconds in the normal mode and 3.2 milliseconds um, in the high density mode. What else do we have? Also a very nice thing is encryption. ULXD offers encryptions. We use AES-256 encryption and um, that means if you don't have access to the receiver you cannot listen into the signal. That's a big disadvantage 
with digital signals analog systems if you know the frequency you can tune in and you can listen to it not with uh, digital signals so encryptions um, also a very very uh, important thing and uh, since we are in the digital domain let's we we offer digital outputs as well ULXD has analog outputs of course but it is also we also feature Dante digital outputs um, the receiver comes in three form factors we have a quad receiver the one we see here we have a dual receiver very much the same but with two receivers less and we have also a single receiver the single receiver um, is in comes in a half rec uh, chassis with an external power supply and the single receiver is uh, has no Dante it only has analog outputs the dual and the quad receiver are coming to full rack size and both have Dante digital outputs and um, Dante has a couple of nice advantages and uh, I want to give you some details about it Dante uh, is Ethernet based Dante uses gigabit Ethernet uh, network components, standard components like your PCs. The switches you, you, you are using have to uh, fulfill some criteria, but most of the switches you can buy out there do that. You have to configure them, but most of, the, of them will work right out of the box. Uh, so Dante is audio over Ethernet. And um, another very nice thing about Dante is interfaces also very well with computers um, as you can see on my my laptop here there is a, a software called um, the Dante controller it's offered by Ordinate Ordinate is uh, the uh, more or less inventor of, of Dante and uh, what you can see here very easily and very nice is uh, how Dante can be patched um, so I have up here my Dante transmitters and uh, on the left side I have my Dante receivers and you see here uh, my virtual sound card of my computer here um, in the background uh, right here you can see this is um, also offered by Dante it's called virtual sound card it's a piece of software you install on, on your computer and you have a sound card for Dante uh, already built in because it uses the network port of the of the PC so all you need is a network port and you need this virtual sound card and you can play with Dante so what I could do now is just record everything that comes out of my ULXT receivers because I patched the, the two outputs of my quad receiver to my Dante virtual sound card and I, now I could easily record everything with any recording software on my MacBook. Shure offers uh, a couple of more Dante devices, for example, our SCM820 um, automatic mixer. And uh, you probably know that Yamaha is also uh, offering many, many um, Dante devices, for example, the latest um, CL consoles. Yeah, so far from my side, a quick look on digital wireless microphones on uh, ULXD in particular the advantages and disadvantages. Thank you and bye.